Welcome to my next series of videos. This one will be the Microsoft Official Academic Course Configuring Windows Devices in preparation for exam 70-697. I do not own the rights to the textbook or the lab manual. I am simply providing these videos to help students maneuver their way through the lab manual step by step. Okay, the first thing we're going to need to do is set up our machines. In the classroom, I actually have a live network set up with the machine that we're going to need. But for purposes of doing these videos, I'm using Hyper-V with all the machines under the Hyper-V. <clears throat> you can, of course, use any virtual um, application. I just like using Hyper-V because it's part of uh, Windows. Now, I already have it installed, and I will show you where that is. So, we're going to go into Control Panel, Programs, Turn Windows Features On and Off, and you'll see I already have Hyper-V installed. Now, when you go to install Hyper-V and you click on these check marks, you're going to have to reboot. Once you reboot, go back to here just to make sure you don't have any grayed out boxes. If you do, what that means is you have to go into the BIOS and enable virtualization. There's a lot of different YouTube videos that can show you how to do that. So I have Hyper-V on. Now I am working with Windows 10. Um, also for the purposes of these videos, there are eight machines that we're going to be working with. Four of them are Server 2012 R2, and the other four are Windows 10 Enterprise. Because of that, I've had to install additional RAM. Normally, I run about 16 gig, and it's usually sufficient to run about four machines. But because I'm running eight machines, I've had to increase and add two more sticks of eight gig of RAM um, for a total of 32. Now, how do we access Hyper-V Hyper from Windows 10? <clears throat> so we're going to go ahead and click on here, left click on the Windows icon, and then we're going to scroll down to Windows Administrative Tools, scroll down some more, and here we have Hyper-V Manager. Now because we're going to be using it quite a bit, I'm going to go ahead and right click and more, and I want to pin this to my taskbar. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. We're not going to need this for right now. Okay, so here is my Hyper-V. Just a minute. Open up my um, Explorer. And I want to do a new folder. New folder 70-697. And I want to store everything inside this folder. So before we do anything else, what I want to do is click on Hyper-V Settings and change this and then click on Apply. And then I want to do the same thing with virtual hard disks. and then apply, and then OK. Now, the other thing we're going to need to do is create an internal switch and an external switch. So I'm going to click on Virtual Switch Manager, and I'm going to do my internal one first, Create Virtual Switch, and I'm just going to call it very simple, INT Switch. You don't want to make these complicated. You want to keep them simple because as we go through these exercises, some of the machines have multiple switches and you want to be able to easily identify which is which. We're going to go ahead and do apply. And then I want to do a new virtual switch. This one's going to be external. Create. EXT. Switch. Now, if you're working from your laptop, you want to make sure you have the right 
Ethernet. I actually have three ports for my Ethernet, so I want to make sure I'm using the correct one. So I'm going to go ahead and do OK. And then yes, that's fine because I'm not on the internet right this second. Now I can go ahead and set up my first machine. So I'm going to right click new the virtual machine and then next. And again, this is going to be LON DC1. Click on next. We always use a general generation one. I've never seen a situation where we use generation two. And then next. And here we're going to do 2048. We're going to use dynamic memory. And then next. Now the instructions say to use a private network switch. So I'm going to skip this for now. And then here we want to do 50. And then next. Now we want to install an operating system from a bootable CD or DVD ROM. Bootable uh, DVD, so I have that there. And I'm going to go ahead and click on next. And then finish. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and boot it. So we've only installed the image. We haven't installed the machine yet. So now we have to install the actual machine, or the operating system on the machine. comes up. Okay, so we have, we're going to go ahead and do next and install now. And we want to do standard with GUI. You don't want to do the core. We want to make sure we do standard with GUI. And I know it's with GUI if I extend it. And these are all 64-bit. And then we're going to go ahead and do next. And then accept. Next. Custom. Next. Now while this is installing, um, if you do not have Server 2012 available, you can get it for free to download. And I'll pull that site up. I did it wrong. Let's try it one more time. There we go. And you can sign up for 180 day evaluation. You can do any one of these. If you want to do ISO and then continue, you're going to have to actually register for it, although it is free. So I'm going to close out of that and let's see. And I'm going to go ahead and pause the video while we wait for this uh, to complete its installation. Okay, now we are going to go ahead and just put in password. And we're going to use the same password for everything. Oops. Okay, so that's going to be our password for everything that we do during these labs. <clears throat> okay, 
Now, in order to do Control-Alt-Delete, if we were on a live machine, yes, we would do Control-Alt-Delete. We can't do that because we're on a virtual machine. So we go into Action, we're going to click on here, and then put in Password. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do is click on local server. You'll see my Ethernet isn't connected yet, but that's okay. There it goes. All right, time zone. We want to change our time zone. And I happen to be on the Eastern. And then OK. And then OK. Now the next thing we want to do We're going to go ahead and change the name. Now, a common mistake that students make is they try to put it here. That is not going to change the name. That is just a description. So I'm going to click on change. And I'm going to do the LON-DC1. And this is going to be where we put our domain, but we haven't set this up as a domain controller yet. So we're going to click on OK. And it's going to make us restart. So I'm going to click on OK and then close. I'm going to do restart later only because I want to actually shut the machine off. Go down here, right click, shut down. actually close out of this, go back into my Hyper-V, and you'll see that my machine is off. So I'm going to go ahead and do my virtual switch manager and add a private. And then OK. Now while it's off, what I can do is go down in here under LONDC1 and click on Settings. Click on my Network Adapter, go to my drop-down, and then go ahead and choose Private. And then go ahead and click on OK. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and end the video here just to try and keep my videos a little bit shorter than I normally do. The next video we're going to continue this and add more machines.